to news from a different view in cooperation with the Dayton Weekly News. We're glad to have you here as our guest and we hope that today you will enjoy, not only enjoy, but be educated by our show. I'm excited because I've got a lovely lady sitting next to me <laughs> who is very knowledgeable in an area that all of us should try to learn something about and that's money. My guest today is Miss uh, Michelle Graves out of Cincinnati. She came all the way down here to Dayton to be on my show to talk about money. So we're real happy about that. And uh, as a matter of fact, her nickname, well, I don't know what you call it, nickname. Yes, yeah, it's, it's my moniker. Yeah. It's my brand. Is Her brand is she's called a money lady. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, she's called a money lady, and they call me the empty pockets guy, so I don't know. <laughs> That, that's kind of rough. But anyway, we're really happy to have Ms. Graves here today. And I've had her on my show, uh, what, two or three years ago? Yeah, about three years ago. And I was about, really, mm -hmm, really, mm -hmm. really impressed. Yeah. And one of the things she left with me, and I think about it all the time, and that is the DNA of blacks, how we have become who we are through the DNA process. Yes. I want you to, to you know, I know you, I don't want to do the whole show on it, but no, you could. No, but we could. You could. Because it's some deep stuff. It's some deep thought, but it's I just want you stuff. to mention that today. Okay. So um, we, we're going to, we're going to spend this hour talking to Ms. Graves about uh, not only who she is, but some of the things she does and how it can uh, not only profit us as a people, but also be an uh, education process. Welcome to the show, Ms. Gray. I'm so delighted. I, well, I'm I am so delighted. I'm happy as a, <laughs> I would say what I generally say when I say that, but I ain't gonna say it. That's good. That's tell me, good. tell me just a little bit about who Michelle Graves is. I know there's a lot, and we probably yeah. would need two or three hours, but we ain't gonna, mm -hmm. uh, cause I'm hungry. I'm <laughs> take two or three hours. Am I can I go with you and your wife to get some food? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. But uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about, uh, about who you are. Well, I've been in the world of banking and finance for over 40 years. I am officially a senior citizen myself now. What? Hey, life happens. Yeah. It does, it comes fast. And um, so I am officially, um, a senior citizen, I'm, you know, I'm getting Social Security and Medicare and other things that go along with retirement. I still am actively involved uh, in uh, my private practice as far as a consultant on money affairs um, on a global, regional, and on a one-to-one. -one. I work with all kinds of people in all kinds of situations dealing with retirement planning, uh, estate work, um, widows, um, but my real, real, real um, passion is seeing people empowered. I, and particularly my own people. Now, 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 white people don't get me stuck here. I don't have nothing against you. I'm just saying to you that my tribe looks like me. The shared experience is slavery. Right. I just came back from D.C. to the Smithsonian's African American. I want to go so oh, bad. Oh, you going I couldn't take it. I got, I was in the slavery piece, and I began to suffocate. 
It was so painful. I, I couldn't take it. Now, mind you, by my training and background, that was one of my uh, areas of expertise in grad school, was slavery. We built this country, period. From the White House to the outhouse. The White House to the outhouse. They That's leased right. slaves, and we built the White House. We built the, st the Capitol. We built all that stuff. And to see all the things that happened to us. And I kept saying uh, to my associate who brought me there, I said, how, but for the grace of God, did we make it? How? Because we didn't cause harm to anybody. We were here as animals, mistreated and abused. And the thing about it is that I wish I could say that slavery is over. I wish I could say that. Chattel slavery, where we were considered three-fourths of a human, right. may be over. But economic slavery is alive and well. You work and you work if you can work, if you can get a job. You come into this world with very little. And most of us, sadly, leave this world with very little. It's true. So you put in all these years called your work life into somebody else's stuff. And again, that is what I consider so unacceptable. It's offensive. It's disturbing. And we have got to recognize that unless we take control of our own situation, we could not expect anybody else to deliver us from this but ourselves. And that, that kind of brings me to this thought, Michelle. And I think about it all the time. In fact, I just experienced it in a situation uh, this week, last week. Um, how important and what responsibility do we as African Americans have in our own destiny? For instance, if uh, I'm promoted to, uh, on a job to, uh, say, a banking president or something, mm -hmm. uh, and I know because I've been around a lot of people of other persuasions and listening to them talk, and I know that things do happen for them that don't happen to us, mm -hmm. is it my responsibility to um, eh, cross the line a little bit every once in a while to make things happen? that would normally happen? Or do I have to stay on that line and, and say, hey, well, I can't, you know, I can't do that because, um, you know, I might, you know, do this and it'd be wrong. Well, let me just say to you, just being open. Yeah. I am not only a Christian, meaning I believe and ascribe to the mandates that God set for, for his people through his son, Jesus Christ. I believe that, but I'm also a minister. Now, a lot of people don't know that, and a lot of people do know that. But as I tell people, when you understand that God never created humans to be at the bottom of the pit, He never did. There's nothing in the Bible where people that are in pits that are His people stay there. But He gives us a charge. And that is that we are to attend to first him, and then our immediate family, and then our community. The Hebrews were not a part of the Roman Empire. They had their own tribe. They had their own customs. They had their own religious um, uh, holidays and persuasions. The children were not fraternizing with others, but they were training and teaching them themselves, which they still do. The Jews, the Jews do not, do not do it like that. And that was just fine because he said, if you're honorable, if you do these things, I'm going to bless you. Right. That, this is what he said. Now, you know, we don't really, it's convenient, but it's not right to pick and choose which things you want to hold on to and which things you don't, and expect a good outcome. 
where we are today as a community is we are in the midst of decimation and chaos. Decimation because our young people are not living their lives fruitfully, positively, and, and, and to old, old age, they're dying, they're either shooting or getting shot. Our old people are being decimated because they don't have anybody that truly is invested in loving and caring for them. They wind up at the most vulnerable years of their lives, having to go into nursing homes on Medicaid, losing everything they could have had, or succumbing to all kinds of diseases and illnesses as a reward for stress, because stress over 40 years will kill you, no, no doubt about it. Diabetes and heart problems and all these other cancers are direct result of unrelenting stress. And there you are. So we, we are at a crossroads in terms of our people. And so the, the question is, do you want to face your maker? Because we all gonna go there. We are all gonna face him, I believe that. Are you gonna go there looking crazy? Are you going to say, you know what, I, I absolutely got what you said and I worked hard to create an environment where my people could prosper, could thrive, could have their own businesses, could attend to their children, could love their old and elderly people. It, it's, it, what, what report do you wanna leave behind? Yeah. One of the things I was trying to get to, uh, Michelle, is that we as African Americans, do we have a direct responsibility to ourselves? In yes. other words, am I my brother's or sister's keeper? Now, I'm, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get current. Okay. Uh, you know, we, this show is being taped right in the middle of, uh, of a firestorm with uh, Miss Amarosa. Marat and the White House. Now, Amarosa was a um, it was is a young lady who I think just basically got caught over her head. I mean, really, mm -hmm. it can happen. But, but at the same it, but at the same time, happen. I think what we what Amarosa did, in my opinion, is what many of us do, and that is we think we can play the game. Mm -hmm. And we really can't play mm -hmm. the game. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, and, and, mm -hmm. and my philosophy, and anybody know me will tell you that, and I've been on about 40 or 50 boards over the years. Oh, God, yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, but when I walk in the door of my first board meeting, and this is the truth, you know what I think about? What? What can I do for black people? Exactly. What can I do for black people? Right. I remember I was on a hospital board, and I won't call the board's name, but I was on a hospital board, and they were, this was at the beginning of their, uh, uh, they were expanding, mm -hmm. like most of the hospitals. They, mm -hmm. they had, uh, they became corporate entities. Yes. And I was on the board, and I was appointed to the strategic planning board, the committee, and I've never get one night we were at a meeting, uh, in the meeting, and uh, uh, I'm listening to them talking about we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to show that we need to look at this. By, and I'm saying, so, so I jumped up. I said, well, what uh, what are we going to do for West Dayton, mm -hmm. which is primarily mm -hmm, black community? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the chairman told me, well, I won't call the name of the other hospital, but he said, we'll let XYZ Hospital take care of that. He said this. He said that to his board. That's right, and at that moment, I was turned off. Mm -hmm. A couple of months later, I resigned. Mm -hmm. Because I, what was my purpose? I'm mm -hmm. not trying to build white America. White America's already built. Anything I do and still do is to try to uplift and enhance the African American community. So bringing you back to my mm -hmm. point, you know, um, if, if, I, if I'm a, uh, in a position of authority or a position of power and I don't do anything for black people, I mean, you know, sometimes you, you cross the line a little bit. 
Well, you may cross the line deliberately, because I did. Well, deliberately. You know. Because I'll be honest with you, I've had, I'll just kind of back up a minute. I was trying to get a line of credit mm -hmm. years ago, and I was having a hard time. So I just happened to know the president of, of one of the larger banks. Mm -hmm. He happened to be a Caucasian gentleman. We just happened to be friends. And we were at a reception one night, and um, I and uh, I said, well, well, I asked Fred, you know, what do I ha have to do? So I said, Fred, uh, it's, it's, I, I said, uh, I need to talk to you. Can I, can we get, can I call you? He said, sure. Mm -hmm. Call me about seven o'clock in the morning. That's when I answer my own phone. Mm -hmm. I called him. Now, under normal circumstances, I would have called, you know what, trying to get this thing. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, I had it. Right. And that's right. what I'm talking about. Right. But, I, but I've had the same thing happen where my, my own person was in a position of that. And, you know, well, you know, we got to do this. Your, your credit rating has to be that and all this kind of stuff. You know. And really? keep in mind, I've been in business uh, for right. decades. Right. Right. You know, I know my credit rate because you show me a black person that's been in business a long time that ain't called Peter right. to pay Paul. Right. But at the same time, I, I you know, I felt, I just feel that, uh, hey man, look here, I don't want you to let me down, but I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. Sometime, not every time, but sometime. Well, I, you know I owned a bank. Which, <laughs> I, which bank? A Camelot Mortgage in Cincinnati, Ohio. You okay. didn't know it was a black woman. Because okay. they weren't back in the day. I mean, I was, I owned that bank for almost 20 years. I, you wouldn't have thought it was me, but as they will tell you, the person signing the checks for people to get homes was me. And the reason I did it is because the banks would not make loans available to black people, right. uh, women with children, there you go. and veterans. And I said, why not? I'm, I come out, to, I know this business, I bought banks for white companies. so. I couldn't raise the money here. I had to raise the money. The initial capital came out of Atlanta, Georgia, white and black investors. Um, and uh, they trusted and believed me. And I started my company in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, with a white president. Because I didn't care if that's what you got to see. That's right. If, you, if that's, I'm the one signing the checks. And I will tell you, I made thousands of loans mortgage loans. Now I will tell you the downside, because a lot of people don't know this, but for people whose credit was compromised, also known as bad credit, right. I had to personally sign on the mortgage for two years. Hmm. Two years. And you know what? Not one of my loans defaulted. In fact, I got a commendation from Bill Clinton. I got a commendation from Fannie Mae. I got a commendation from the Veterans Administration, and, and nobody defaulted. And, and that's why I told them, I don't, I don't want to hear this. And I mean, I was a little bit nervous sometime because if they had defaulted, the loan would charge back to me, to my right. company. Right. But I told people right up front, I'm doing something for you, and I'm doing something for me. Because I'm helping you, I'm helping me. You right. see what I'm saying? Oh, no doubt. And and that's that that was a problem for some people of the other hue. But like I told them, you you think I don't understand how this works? You all go out of business. Banks fail Every because day. you making money with your friends. That's right. That boardroom is full of guys cutting deals with each other to make sure things go. So if I can do my little part to put my people in homes, I'm going to do it. Well, we see that right now during the um, um, Trump administration, mm -hmm. how interplay with each other has called. Do you see that? Oh, man. Do you see that? It's running rapid. Is it rampant? It's rampant. And amok? That's I rampant. mean, like, oh, my God. Yeah. But it's out here it's for out everybody here, to see. Am I right? You're exactly right. Please. Ask Amorosa. I, I can't go there because I don't have, I'm not even wired like that. Right. 
and you know that. Right. I'm not even wired like that. I came out of a Kentucky backwoods rural framework where we all had to take care of each other. Everybody had to work. Black people worked like dogs. Right. And we worked like dogs. We prayed together. We played together. And as I told them, I know how to farm. I also know how to shoot people, including deer. And I got lots of degrees and credentials, so I wouldn't have to do that kind of work again, because, God, that is hard I work. To, I would imagine. Oh, my goodness gracious. My hands are still yellow. I'm serious from tobacco. So I tell people, don't, don't, don't. I'm not the one. Don't be prissy with me. You know full well when you go in a lion's den, that lion's full of tea. And you may be dinner one day. It just depends on what his frame of mind is. So I don't care about her. I hope she can work it out uh, because it's a sad thing to not be connected with your tribe. I mean, it's just a sad story not to be connected with your tribe. But I think, um, and I don't want to labor on uh, Amarosa, mm. but uh, I think Amarosa could have could very easily have been Don Black. Now, if the President of the United States asked me tomorrow mm -hmm. to serve on his cabinet, you think I wouldn't? As long as you understand the terms of engagement. The problem is understanding the terms of engagement. Yeah. Most of us think that we're in position because we're the smartest guy in the room. And no. that's not true. Mm -mm. No. And that's what was, that was Amarosa. Uh, she's a nice lady. I met her uh, last year up at Central State University. Okay. And, uh, I've she, never met her. Yeah, I met her, and we sit down and talk and so forth. But the fact of the matter is is that we have false ideas that often backfire with us. Terms of engagement are very important if you are going to be in leadership. Right. Whether you are running your own company or whether you're doing something else, pastoring a church, or running a, a business. You got to know the terms of engagement. Who you're doing business with. What is it looking like? What are your objectives? I don't serve on boards. I used to. I was on so many boards I didn't even know the names. <laughs> some, of them, right. some of them uh, were good, meaning I was able to get some things done uh, in Greater Cincinnati. Um, the board I was on, we spirited the first credit counseling component, never been done in the city's history. I said, people don't go into debt because they stupid. They go into debt because you all got a fierce marketing program. Fierce. You're on TV 24-7 telling people to buy cars, right. credit cards, and they don't know because it's called marketing. Right. So we pushed, and that went through, Don, and I'm very pleased to say it's now been implemented all over the United States. I'm trying to think of it, and I worked with them, and my mind is just I'm getting old. Okay, me too, them. so don't be, don't take but, me too um, hard. They were a Cincinnati-based, um, not a bank, but what's mm -hmm. the It was a credit, counsel, credit counselors. Well, um, hmm, what was the name of it? I know you know it because everybody knew it. Well, it was before the, the banks, mm -hmm. black banks came Right, in. right. And uh, I worked with them. Uh, it was a family that owned it, if I'm not mistaken. I this was back in the early 80s. It's exactly in the early 80s, because that's when we did it. Yeah. But the reason that it was done, and again, I take to heart that God doesn't put you into places based on who you are, but he puts you into places based upon what you are purposed to do. And again, because of the serious disparities between our people, our tribe, and everybody else, there are those of us, yourself included, who have been raised up with a destiny in place to do these things. I, I tell people, you, you couldn't pay me a million dollars to do what I've had to do and to go through the, the stuff I've had to go through. They couldn't right. pay you. That's right. You know, when you, the, the, the pain, the personal offenses, all that stuff, which is a part of pushing that piece to where it's got to go. And yet we do it because we understand 
that it's more than us. Yeah. It's about a people, and it's about a nation of people who are, in my opinion, based on what I saw at the Smithsonian, oh, we're the strongest people on earth. No doubt. Oh, my goodness gracious. I don't have to go to the Smithsonian oh, to oh, know oh, that. Oh, oh, strongest people on earth. That's right. Strongest women on earth. That's right. No, just just strong, because of what we had to go through in order to live and to survive. So again, I have a message of great hope, but it's going to require tremendous sacrifice by a lot of people who have not felt the need to give up nothing. I haven't felt the need to give up nothing. Me, myself, and I, you know, boo, work it, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, you don't even understand. Your children have no hope. Your grandchildren have no future. That's right if you're not willing to move out of the realm of your selfishness and fear and take what is yours. And you know, the, the, the issue, the problem there is that they see so much pain in you. Yeah. You know, you, don't, you can't come home and eat hey, Johnny, come on, boy, let's sit and play football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you come, when you come home, Johnny see pain in your face. Mm -hmm. He see where you've been smacked around all day and where you've been dejected all day. You know, my son, um, when he graduated from college, uh, the last play, and he, he's a pretty smart kid. He had several offers. He was in, went to school in D.C., Washington. Okay, that's where I just came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know mm -hmm. you told yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he had some nice offers. And in the last place in the world, I never mentioned it to him because I didn't come down here and <laughs> back here to meet him. Uh -huh. You know, and, and seeing me rob Peter to pay Paul and do all the things. But we were sitting in his little apartment, and um, one day, a few days before uh, graduation, and uh, he said, Dad, what do you think about me uh, coming back working with you? Whoa. What? Oh, my words. It, it literally oh. blew my mind. Oh, my goodness. I, I said, Your well, son. My son. Ooh. I said, you know, mm. well, you know, I, that mm. would be great. Mm -hmm. My son came back to work with me at $25 a week mm. and all kind of things, you know. And uh, he worked with me for a number of years. And um, it probably would still be there, but uh, he, he's, I mean, he's, a, he's just a smart, you know. Smart guy. He's got charisma, too. Mm -hmm, I mean, he's got, mm -hmm. he's got that it factor. Mm -hmm. Well, people just draw to him, mm -hmm. I mean, you know. And um, he, um, people start giving him offers, man. Mm -hmm, I bet. You know, six big offers I and bet. Stuff. So <laughs> one of them he got, uh, I told him, I said, Take that job, man. You're married now. You got a daughter. Oh, Dad, but I don't want to leave you. I literally pushed him out the door. I believe it. Go take that job I because I could see another me, mm -hmm. you know, in him mm -hmm. where the pain, the degradation, and all the things that I've had to deal with, like you, like you said a minute ago. Mm. People don't. People wouldn't understand it. They would not understand. They it. wouldn't. They would not understand what the average black and I've known, and I'm sure you have too, in Cincinnati, black uh, men and women who have had businesses yes. for a long time, yes. and the pain they have at the end of the day when they die or they mm -hmm. whatever uh, it, it is it's tremendous. So I, I just didn't. I didn't want to look down through the annals of time and see him being another me, uh, regardless of how it turned out. So, you know, he no longer works for me, even though whenever I call on him, I've had times where I, where he's had to pay my people. I believe it. And that's the God's truth. I believe it. Because times were tough at that time. But so, look at what you raised up. Yeah. Do not minimize, because I have three, and they were with me uh, cleaning in my company's building. Right. The janitorial crew didn't show up. Guess who was cleaning the toilets? That's right. <laughs> I That's told right. them, look, this is a business. 
and to survive we have to work as a team as a family that's right and that's the way we worked it now today all three of them will tell you the first one is an entrepreneur right. but the other two said mom I can't do it it's just too hard and not knowing what every day is going to be it's, it's just too hard and yet I remain totally persuaded that that's the only way we're gonna get free yeah you have got to have your own stuff ownership yes is the key element you know I tell people all the time but you, you ride them down the street and I said boy I'm a fish lover I love mm -hmm. fish me too and I said, Man, I want me a piece of fish as much as black people love fish there's not a fish black home fish place in date the yeah. Arabs on most mm -hmm. of them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't know what some of these people are. But How anyway. the heck did that happen? I don't know. I don't, they don't even, uh, I said, what? we don't even <laughs> own a fish place as much as we love. And I remember when black people had fish markets, mm -hmm. fish uh, mm -hmm. places. You know, we, we don't have any control over our, our, not even my eating habits, let alone anything mm -hmm. else. Why? Why are we sitting up here, um, Letting everybody, because see, all these groups, the um, Arabs and Chinese, Chinese, Indians, Korean, Japanese, Indians. when they come here, they don't come here saying, man, I'm going to get me a job at Joe Motors. They say, hey, let's go to the black community. They'll buy anything we got. And, and, and never that's lied. What, and, no, they ain't. I mean, that's the honest truth. Now, it may sound hard, but it's true. The well, hair you have thing. to hair, yeah, hair. Look at how pretty your hair. Yeah. But you got to go to a, a, a white, a, a Asian place to get your hair thing. Yeah. You know. Because they they came in. Now I'm. May I say something? Yeah. Because this is a true statement. Uh, Bronner Brothers, awesome, awesome. Out of Atlanta. I know. Oh no, loved him, his wife, his, yeah. and they. I was a consultant, and I was doing their continuing education class. Right. And at that time, I was on my way to China to, to live. Really? I, 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 I lived in China. Okay. Uh, uh, 2005. Ching Chang Chu. You know McCoy. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to go. Why she go to China? Cause I can. <laughs> Y'all hear that? <laughs> Cause I can. But I told the women at this convention. I said the Koreans can't stand the Chinese, it's like cousins, but they still cousins. Right. And I said, they're getting ready to come over here and wipe our African American business owners out in the hair business. Yeah. How are they gonna do it? Because all the hair come from over there. Okay, they tell their women grow their hair and, and in I said India and, 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 and India, and primarily women grow their hair. But the Chinese buy the hair from them and then they sell it to the very people they can't stand yeah. because it's business and then they come over here and then they sell it to us now they did exactly what I had warned those women about at that Browner Brother uh, Atlanta convention and the sisters were hot I said can't we get get enough money together to buy uh, a, a, a controlling interest since the Chinese don't care about them, no way. The Chinese are about bottom line. Who we gonna do business with, Michelle? And um, couldn't get it together because nobody believed that it was coming down the pike. They right. didn't believe it. So now you can't even get in their stores with your products. If you do have a product, right. they have a monopoly and they're taking care of each other, their own tribe. So this is why I'm I'm happy to be on your show because I do think there's some answers. I think there's some answers if for those of us who are willing to go into the promised land, for those of us who are willing to fight off all the grasshoppers and the giants and all the naysayers and those who are full of fear because fear, if you're full of fear, stay stuck, stay where you are. But I think that as I look at institutions and I look at young people and what's going on and what's not going on, I think there are some opportunities. And I wanted to talk to you about that. Are you open to listening? Yeah. Okay. 
the largest assemblage of black people occur every Sunday. That's right. The, the, you want to know where black people are on Sunday? In church. In church. That's right. They in, they in AMEs, they in Baptist churches, uh, other non-denominations, but we Speaking are, of AME, I see uh, we ran a story. Aren't they something? Where they uh, combining with black banks. Don, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. They are shifting the banking relationship right. to African, now it's only 22 compared to 100 uh, 2008 and prior, but they are shifting the power base into African American banks. I've forgotten the bank in Atlanta that's online and they're very, very advanced and there are other Citizens. banks. Citizens. Um, United, maybe it's a it's an African American. It's in out of Atlanta. Yeah, citizens. citizens is, okay. I think the oldest. Because they got thirty thousand ATM networks. You can deposit online. Right. You can do all your business. But that's a power. That's that's a power connect. I'm I'm excited about that one. Yeah. I'm excited about the possibility of reclaiming our neighborhoods reclaiming them, let the price continue to, to diminish. Right. I, don't, I don't care. Let it go down to free. <laughs> you know, there if you, you want to, if, if the property is just whatever, but can't we come together as um, investors and begin to buy property cheap or free through grants and donations? and begin to change the face of our own communities. But you know, I, I, you know why you're saying that, and everything you're saying I agree with. But I was just thinking there's a very, very exclusive country club here in Dayton. Okay. And they want to sell it. Oh, they want to sell it? They wanted to sell it. I think they sold it. And okay. I said, boy, this would be just, I mean, my philosophy is this. Anything we use a lot of, we all own. I, I, I like you that, know, they got, including I, grocery I, stores. <laughs> well, not, yeah, but, you know, I remember uh, my buddy, I I say that loosely because we're not that close, but Tony Brown. Okay. Tony Brown. Mm -hmm. Black, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember when Tony Brown tried to get uh, black organizations to join together to uh, buy a hotel in, in cities like Atlanta. Yes one or two hotels. Mm -hmm. And because we spent a lot of money, look how many conventions they've yes, had we do. this year um, in, in cities like Atlanta and Chicago, but the NAACP just had the, mm -hmm. the Detroit uh, uh, conventions, Urban League and all that. What if we owned the hotel? I mean, I ain't talking about no hole in the wall, I'm talking no. about class, right? a hotel a uh, couple of them in strategic places, uh, West Coast and, and and Midwest or East Coast, that we could just put our money in. What that would mean to the economic empowerment of black people? Well, there's but, one man that just did it in D.C. Really? The 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 Marriott Marquis, which is fabulous. Really? Because I stayed there. Really? Oh, I, oh, a black man. No kidding. I ain't heard about that. I know. Well, when you, you ain't got to have everything well, on front page to when be you powerful. When you said that, I thought you were going to sit down Trump. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> now, see, you're going to mess up the interview. I know, gonna, but I, gonna, I thought you was going to say, well, man, just You're going to mess up my mind. <laughs> you're going to make me mad. Okay. Oh, this hotel, the the Marriott Marquis, is is fabulous. It's fabulous. I, I mean, fabulous, and it's creating angst for every economic envy, which is how he do that. Well, why are you asking that question? That's not the question you need to be asking. The question you need to be asking is, is he going to do more? Is he going to do more? <laughs> is he going to do more? And is, is he, he going to share it, it, the information that can produce more? Yeah. See, you know. so... I looked at that, I enjoyed it, and I said, oh, this, is, this feels so wonderful. But I still believe that we are going to have to depend upon our concentrated wealth, 
which is in the form of churches, to begin to uh, make a change in our communities. I know in Cincinnati, Ohio, Reverend Damon Lynch is launching an initiative that's getting ready to flip everybody. I'm so serious. You need to watch this man, Don. He, yeah, he, I will. He, oh, please do. I, I've met him before. Oh, uh, he's been on my show. I'm going to have him on end of the month. But I was in his congregation when he was talking to them about Dr. King and the speech he gave the day before he was assassinated about I may not get, get there with you. I may not get there with you. That's right. I may not get there with you. And what he said to us is that we don't have time at this point in history to get sidetracked and distracted over anything other than our own community well-being because right. things are bad. And I don't care what anyone says, and you need to know this, when they talk about black unemployment being low, the reason the rate is low is because the participation rate is through the re we, we don't look for jobs anymore. So you're not counted. So yeah. of course the stats look good because you're not out here. But believe me when I tell you that our people are having a rough time and our men are in the penitentiary. And you know what's so ironic, they're going to legalize marijuana and all of them in there for marijuana. And all of them in there like, for marijuana. Ain't that something? Oh, ain't that something? Right. But that's a whole nother show. It is a whole nother because show. Because when you think about this drug, what's the name of it? Oh, you're talking about um, the opioids? Opioid and how, you know, they're, what they're doing. And they, they right here in Dayton, there was a, um, um, back in the, 70s, uh -huh. they, they built a place called Project Cure, which was primarily, it was built by a guy named Abdul Zappa, who was a well-known activist and, and Muslim. Okay. And uh, it, it, was, it, it helped a lot, of, a lot of people. Well, last year, they decided to move the place from Dayton to one of the suburbs. Oh, really? Sure did. Oh, and what's that about? Well, what that is about is that that opal or whatever Opioids, the name of uh -huh. it, is taking over the white communities. I mean, they, Dayton had at one time uh, last year the highest uh, death rate uh, for drugs in the country. Oh my at goodness! At one time. Oh my goodness! Yeah, did. Yeah. That's horrible. So you you go to the suburbs of Dayton, and one on almost on every corner there's a treatment place for, for this condition for drugs. Oh wow! But but keep in mind that with the um, crack yeah. gave you five years. But this is what I'm saying about the whole issue of what is what is justice, what is fairness, what it has done to our community, uh, in terms of our men, in terms of our families. The the, the you talk about separation of families. Right. And I share with people that's deeper than Mexico. Oh, let's yeah. let's go back to slavery when Massa couldn't pay his debt, and all of a sudden your family was on the, the selling on block. The selling oh block. yeah, husbands, wives, children, everybody sold to satisfy his because you were collateral. You were you represented collateral like a car or, or land or something. We don't want to think about that when we talk about our families and where we are today. And particularly among young people, and I hope that young people are listening to this, you're, going, you're getting ready to see it for yourself. You don't have to take our word for it. We, we, we're old school, as some would say. But yeah. I'm, really, I'm really right on up here with you because, be, because we did not change the face of ownership, because we did not change the, the, the terms of engagement, Right. which is you can't talk to me like that yeah. because my church will not go to your grocery store anymore. We will not ride your bus anymore. We will not go to your school anymore. All the things that are necessary to create a level playing field because this generation did not experience that, they get to experience it now. And I believe that it's going to be that impetus. Same thing that happened in South Africa, right. where the young people said, you know, 
you got me stuck. Yeah. You got me stuck. I'm not doing that. And you see what happened. And now, of course, South Africa, they're demanding that all their land be returned. I think it's beautiful. All the that robbery, land. All that land. Uh, yeah, I mean, to, to see that, a lot of people have gotten upset about that. Even black people. Man, they didn't win over them. Man, I think it's what the great. What a, good is the owner, uh, ownership of a country when you don't own the country? I think it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm I applaud, good with it. I applaud uh, Robert M N Nabob. I can't mm -hmm. say his name. I understand Nabob. But mm -hmm. yeah, you know, because I think he is doing something that has to be copied throughout the, the continent of Africa. Well, it's and, going and to be. Beyond. It's going to be because we are in the middle. This is a spiritual thing yeah. <laughs> because all things have cycles. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that and, too. And that it's just history. All things have cycles. You done brought these people over here, treated them like animals, stripped them of everything, and now you're here. But you don't understand that the very reason you're here is because they are the foundation holding you up. So what happens when the foundation goes this way? You're coming down. You're coming down. That is a truth. Yeah. It may be a painful truth, but you cannot go all over the world messing up people's lives with impunity. That's right. You, you can't do it. It's a spiritual law. It's a violation. I don't care who you support, who you vote for. The king has said that we are our brother's keeper. That's right. We are responsible for each other. We, from the birth to the grave, we bear responsibility for each other. Now, the fact that the world system discounts it, I tell folks, that's on you because he going to get with you. But within our own people, Don, I remain passionate at my age, at my old age. Oh, I quit mean, saying you old. Ain't nothing old but that money in your purse. <laughs> really? You need to stop. It's anyway, true. viewers, pray for him. <laughs> yeah, pray for me. I need prayer. Okay, pray. <laughs> but it ain't because I tell the truth. It ain't because of that. But here we are. What do you think? Are you ready to go? Yeah. Hey, me too. Let's do this. The fearful, the crazy, the compromise. Just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> don't don't yeah. get don't don't bother us. We 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 have work to do, and and we're gonna get it done. And and but for those of you that have a boldness of spirit and and don't like the way this story has been written, you have been given the power to rewrite the story. And that's what I'm excited about. It's going to oh, be tough. I want to touch on one thing before we go. I'm watching that clock on the wall. Okay. Because this this kept this is stuck with me ever since we uh, and that is the DNA of black the methyls, people. The methyls. The methyls. Right. The methyls. Tell, us, tell our audience a little bit about that. When we talked about this, and you can check it out on internet. Wall Street Journal did a series of articles in their science area because so many people are not scientists, I am, uh, by training, they missed it. But here's the deal. The way the body is configured, the brain can only process so much trauma. When a person has a traumatic encounter, repeatedly, over and over, the, the brain begins to produce a specific chemical. We call them methyl acrylates. Right. And these chemicals attach to your DNA and actually are there to prevent you from going crazy. Because, let me say this, if a person has been lashed until they're unconscious, the normal human behavior is, I'm going to get you. Yeah. I don't care when, but I'm going to get you. But the purpose of the methylates is to keep you composed so that you can get through the situation. Now, I'll give you an example and then I'll 
extrapolate and speak to our people. They found that testing white rats, that the mother rat, when she births a baby, babies, every six weeks, she licks on them incessantly. They get her older, she licks on them, they nurse her, she licks on them. What they did to the mother rat is that they killed all her babies. They killed all of them. And the mother rat went into shock. This is fact. She went into shock because her babies are gone. And she had another set of babies in six weeks, and guess what happened? She didn't lick them. She didn't lick her babies. She didn't lick them. Now, let me tell you what happened to the babies that she didn't lick. Guess what they did when they got what? big? What? They didn't lick theirs. Oh, yeah. They didn't lick theirs. When scientists uh, killed the rat and actually did an analysis, they discovered that the rat had created, there was a DNA alteration. This is major because our people experienced such extreme levels of trauma and heartbreak and disconnect that that methyl was created to keep us stable, to keep us from losing our minds and going crazy and killing everyone. The other thing about methyls is that they are genetic and generational. So after the first generation, you didn't have to worry about it because the next generation that would be there as well and the next generation as well. So what did this do to our people? It kept our people, rather than being responsive in terms of protecting our person and defending ourselves, we became passive. Now, I'm not saying all of us, but I'm saying that there's no way in a country like America, where at that time, in the South, whole communities were all black people, all slaves with one white man. How did you have this happen? Because of That's that. That's Oh, no, the, it's understand. because of the methyls. Yeah. Because on an individual basis, their job was to keep you in a, in a place of complacency and acceptance. Now, are we still dealing with that today? Right. No, definitely so. Are we not? You can give people facts, figures, information, and they will get excited for a minute. Ooh, and then they will go back into their... Oh, but I may lose my job where you don't have a job. Oh, I may lose, I may lose, oh my. And it's all about understanding that fear and that trauma that created a people who were so passive. And therefore, it's funny because we go to church on Sundays, we hoop and we holler, and we say, Lord, I thank you. And then we go home to the very same conditions and situation right. that has kept us in lockdown, mental illness, which is rampant in our community because people can't figure it out so they go crazy. And all actually you not- You know they say them angry sisters? You know what, isn't that funny? We're yeah. angry. I tell folks, you stripped us do you know the average black woman under slavery was supposed to have 56 live births? She was his bank. She was the bank. Do you know what 56 babies will bring a, a massa on the block? She was his mortgage. Hey, he wasn't selling her because she was producing. He sell you, but her? Oh no, no, 56. Can you imagine what that did to her soul? Can you imagine? And her body. And her body. Yeah. And her body. Can you imagine that being her story and her not losing her mind? So when people tell me, oh, black women are this, I told them, you need to shut up. That's right. They have to. And But you know what? Yeah. I, I look at the Jews, and you know, on Saturdays, their kids are in school. Yeah. They have to go to school. They have to learn Hebrew. They have to learn all their traditions and why. They have to learn these things from their leaders, from their rabbis, and why? Because they want their people to always remember, always remember that they are God's people. And therefore, they are special, separated, and distinct. I tell people all the time, a Jew will take your money, 
but you will not get business from no Jew. That's right. He going to do business with his own people that's right. because he understands that that's how we stay alive. He understands reciprocity. Uh, of course. And yeah. you have to take care of your own first. Yeah, I right. don't have any quick answers, but I'm telling you, I wake up every day and I'm six feet above the earth and not six feet below the earth. And I thank God for the opportunity another day to be in a position to see this change because I'm telling you, the era of the dinosaur is over. Yeah. Oh no, you, you really gotta know, with all this internet information, I just read, a friend of mine sent me, uh, they done discovered 22,000 black people in Mississippi in graves because after slavery, rather than letting those people go free, they killed them. They killed 20, I, I they, heard oh that. no, I'll send you the article. Please send the anthropologists the have found a grave site. 22, and you know Mississippi, as Nina Simone said, Mississippi, um, 22,000 people Man. that they killed rather than see them go free. Now that's the kind of stuff, like I tell folks, oh, you don't believe in karmic debt? You don't believe that, that our sovereign king is watching all this stuff? You do not believe that if he took out the Hebrews out of Egypt and Ramses II and restored them into their great, kept, kept them, kept them fed, kept money, everything. You don't believe that we are getting ready to enter into a change? I believe that. I'm not kidding you. That but AME you, thing moved me greatly. But you know, when I hear stuff, and I've never heard that. Oh, it's, I'll send it I to get you. A, I'm sitting here right now mad. No doubt. Oh, no doubt. But we have to move forward and deal with our stuff. And those that don't want to come along, that's okay. Well, Michelle, I, I hate to cut. I'm, I'm serious when I say this, and it's very seldom that I could really say this. But, um, you know, we got to do this again from a different perspective soon. Up to you, Don. But I, I, enjoy, I mean, I really do. I'm just mesmerized. And please send me that thing. Cause I'm oh, no, I'm going to do that. No, you because, need to. Uh, That's, isn't that yeah. shocking? It yeah, messed I mean, up my church day. Well, yeah, it, it's, it did. it's kind of messed with my mind. I messed up my church yeah, day. Yeah, I got to go back to the office because uh, the day is our um, day we go to press. Yes. But, you know, you some of the stuff you hear, it's just unbelievable. I mean, a human being did this to human beings, you know, but they did. They did. And they are. And present tense, let's move it forward. And we have to be about the business of reclaiming our stuff. Reclaiming our stuff. I, I'm, I, it's not complicated. Reclaiming, and, and don't be talking about how well off you are. Please. Because because that's an illusion. It's definitely an illusion. Isn't an it illusion. not? Yes, it's an illusion. Definitely you you, illusion. you uh, one, one, one person is not enough. It's not enough. It isn't. So I don't decry and I don't den denigrate those of you that have done well. Hold on to it. Don't let the stress kill you. Because <laughs> it well, will. On behalf of the Dayton Weekly <laughs> News and News of a Different View, I am happy as a lark to have spent this hour with you. And I hope and I know our, our viewership is going to be saying, when's she coming back? What you got to because you got so much information in that I pretty do. head of yours oh. that we really gotta <laughs> gotta do it again. Thank you so much. Really, what a really blessing and a privilege. I appreciate you. Day.